Good afternoon. It is a beautiful day. It is Friday. I'm preparing for the Shabbat. And as I'm preparing for the Shabbat, I like to do something spiritual uh, to lead up to the Shabbat, apart from obviously clean uh, uh, my apartment. This is the fifth lesson, and welcome to the fifth lesson in the series of lessons that is called The 52 Essentials of the Messianic Faith. Um, I'm thankful that I've had a brother commend me on this and uh, I've had one good response and that is um, the response was um, uh, keep up the good work with regards to building up the body and I hope that that's what I'm doing. Um, this lesson, lesson number five, is called the first five books of the Bible. But before we get into this, um, I need to, to make a, an important point here. If somebody was to ask me why have I done these lessons... I'm going to read a passage of scripture, of which that reference will be in the comment section in the YouTube uh, documentary that this will be uploaded later on today. The passage of scripture I want to read, so I am a two glasses person, is found in 2 Timothy, and I'm reading from the King James Version. And I'm reading this because it's important to understand this. 2 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Endure sound doctrine. There is a time, we're living in a time now that people do not endure sound doctrine. I actually had to rebuke um, some people on Facebook and they, they use vulgar language. I'm sorry, but I did. I had to use vulgar language because of my sheer anger and repulsion at the sheer stupidity of Bible believers out there that are not getting it right and are not enduring sound doctrine. The reason why is because yesterday was the summer of solstice and there were people posting articles that the rapture is going to take place today. That is yesterday, the summer of solstice, and that all those people who are Bible believers are not going to be on this planet because of the rapture. And I have no idea how many people followed that lie. I have no idea how many people followed that lie and wanted to go after it with itching ears. Lust of their flesh? Oh, I'm a minister. I've got an eschatological theology going for myself. I've been to Bible cemetery. I'm sorry that I have to be like this. I am so sorry that I have to be like this, but I am so angry at the Bible believers out there that are just jumping all over any passage of scripture to solve their own lustful desires, their itching ears, and their insane, innate inability to grasp sound doctrine. This is why I'm doing this, these lessons. I'm doing these lessons because we're living in a time now that people do not endure sound doctrine. They don't. And as far as I can see from what I've seen, especially on social media, Oh my goodness, they're making the biggest classic mistakes ever, and that is putting dates on prophecies. I'm speaking specifically to people like Michael Rood. The Bible says you're to name people and shame them, that you are to name them. I'm speaking specifically to Michael Rood, who made a statement last year that provoked me to having to do a project which will be in presentation very soon. With regards to the book of Revelation... And linking it to the trumpets and saying something's going to happen. And then he made an amendment, an adjustment. He named dates, 23rd, 24th, 25th of September. That was last year. Then he had to change it to the early October period of time, putting dates on it. Anytime someone does that, then you know full well they've got their own occult cult theory going on. Without further ado, uh, I like to get back to the lesson at hand. <clears throat> You'll have to excuse me, I have a, a chronic bronchitis, my body is in free fall, not exactly operating on all four cylinders, but I, I'll, I'll stick to the war, I'll, I'll, I'll war battle and muddy my way through this. Lesson number five, the first five books of the Bible, now it's important for me to labour the point here. 
first five books of the Bible is called the Torah, the Torah, not the Pentateuch. The Pentateuch is an indiscriminate, disrespectful term applied to Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy. It is called the Torah, which means the instruction. You have first five books, you call it the Pentateuch, you go to a Jewish person and say Pentateuch, they'll scratch their head and think that you came from Mars. Pentateuch just means five books. Go to the library and pick out five books and you can call that the Pentateuch. I know what, I'll tell you what, we'll use um, five books. Enid Blyton, uh, <coughs> Five Go Mad in Dorset, um, uh, Jack and Jill, um, uh, The Prince and the Pauper, um, oh, two more books. Uh, oh yeah, we'll use two more books. Um, how about uh, uh, Robin Hood uh, and then the last book uh, and, and, and that will be Dick Whittington. That's five books. I'll call those the Pentateuch, okay? For all you people out there in fictional land, using the term Pentateuch is a disrespectful and harmful term to the scriptures. It means nothing. I want you to get used to not using such words and use the word Torah, which means instruction. How on earth can you ever take an instruction and relegate it to just indiscriminate term of five books? It's a rebuke to all you people who use that term Pentateuch, especially for those people who are coming out of Bible cemetery, who've got your college degrees and your qualifications in a nice little piece of paper. <clears throat> Pentateuch just means five books. It's an indiscriminate, disrespectful term to a, to a deployment of five essential books of our salvation. That is, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Why are they in, essential to our salvation to understand these books? Because they're the foundation in which all the rest of the scriptures rest. It is from there we find ourselves dealing with the sin of mankind and the, and the prophecies of the redemption of mankind. Coincidentally, there will be a presentation which I will give during this, and I'll have to use my iPad, which will be done at the end of this particular lesson when I've done the reading portion, which when you see rightly understand the cosmic codes that are written in Genesis, oh my goodness. And you want to call that just five books? All you Bible believers out there that call it the Pentateuch, shame on you. Got that message? Good. Now, I'm a two-glasses person. I will read uh, the lesson. There are going to be very few passages of Scripture, actually, in this one. Normally, in the comic section, there's a whole list of passages of Scripture. But because we're dealing with Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, we're essentially really dealing with books that self-explain themselves. And it would be only worthwhile me just putting in the, the chapters and the beginning verse and the end verse and you just read through them. They are very intense books, by the way. Uh, Genesis also being the most maligned book on the face of the globe, primarily because of its creation account. And for those people out there who do not believe in the creation and believe in evolution, whether it be theistic evolution or bog-standard chemical em evolution or... I'm sorry to say, if you do a study on creation versus evolution, and you look at the study of creation versus evolution, of which I have a book which has yet to be published, you will understand that evolution does not work other than microevolution. That means evolution within the species barrier. That is possible. Adaptation within the species barrier does work. But, but there are six other forms of uh, evolution, which is applied cosmological evolution, chemical evolution, biological evolution, uh, geological evolution. These, uh, these evolutionary terms do not work because the science does not back up and support those versions of events. It doesn't. Sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. My bronchitis. Um, so, as you will see, I'm quite hot on the issue of being a young earth creationer creationist, which I am. I'm a young earth creationist. Yes, I've done my study. I've been in and done my trenches in the, in, 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 in the uh, I've done my time in the trenches of science, looking at uh, different disciplines to see if they stack up, and they do not stack up. 
got lots of documentaries on that, tons of data that I've written up on that, which one day I'll get around to presenting, hopefully. Lord willing, Yahweh willing. But essentially, Genesis is one of, is the most maligned book in the scriptures, if only because it deals with the first three chapters, which is the creation account. Without further ado, let us start reading this. You just see the top of my head as I'm reading this. I hope you enjoy this lesson. Father in heaven, I thank you, Father in heaven, for the fact that I'm able to present this, that I have the equipment and the means and the documentation to make it work. I pray, Father in heaven, that you'll bless those people who watch this. And may they enjoy this. May they be edified and may, they be, may their faith be strengthened and not weakened. And may their, may their crinkles in their faith be ironed out so that they have a much more straight uh, version of events. Without further ado, I thank you for that, Father in heaven. In the name of Yeshua, I'm a shirk. I ask and pray. Amen. Five books, the first five books of the Bible. The first five books uh, uh, of the Bible called the Torah, often referred to by the Gentile Bible believers as the Pentateuch, which means five books. Honestly, they represent uh, 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 a second lot of books written in the collection of scriptures, but are also often accepted as the first written revelation of Yahweh. But it is accredited by many scholars that the book of Job was the first book written su as such. I will not immediately, for immediate practical purposes, leave that subject out for discussion as it is not uh, pertinent to this study uh, and uh, as such will clearly state that both the Jews and Bible believing Gentiles that the first five books are accepted as the first written revelation of Yahweh to, ma to man. All five books were written by Moses, well, I would say were written by Moses with the exception of the latter part of Deuteronomy, which clearly were not written by Moses. It sounds like they were, uh, and I presume that's just because that the books needed to be finished. Um, so, but written by Moses, we'll accept that. The great, uh, the great leader of Israel, <coughs> the, the, the contents of these books con uh, uh, convert even from the uh, uh, cover sorry the contents of these five books cover events from creation to the death of Moses no biblical record such a has such a broad expanse of time while many thi things recorded in the first part of these books happened hundreds of years before the birth of Moses Yahweh permitted Moses to review the past as he permitted John, uh, who wrote Revelation, to look into the future. There are many interesting things in these five books worthy of much study and thought. We are not attempting to, exhaust, uh, to be exhaustive uh, of these books in this lesson. Uh, uh, we can point only... We can point out only some of the high points that will help you uh, mostly in having a general knowledge and scope of these important books. Part 1, Lesson 5, the book of Genesis. The word Genesis means origin, beginning, etc. It records the beginning of many things such as the universe, the natural order, vegetation, animal life, man, etc. It is, the, it is the only accurate historical account of the origins of these things. It tells of the beginning of sin, which eventually led to the flood. It tells of the beginning of, wor of worship uh, or adoration. It tells of Yahweh choosing Abraham, uh, later called Abraham, and his seed offspring to become a great nation through whom all the families of the earth would be blessed. This promise was to be fulfilled through uh, Yeshua, who according to the flesh was a descendant of Abraham. It tells the, the immediate generations of Abraham, his son Isaac, and his grandson Jacob, and, uh, uh, and of Jacob's twelve sons, <coughs> excuse me, 
who became the head of the 12 tribes of Israel and of the many true to life events concerning them. Genesis history extends from the creation to the, de to the death of Yosef. Take into note the following divisions of Genesis. <coughs> Excuse me. The first 11 chapters deal with A. Creation, B. Fall into sin, C. Wickedness, D. Beginnings of languages uh, and, uh, and nations. Three, uh, sorry, two, uh, from the 12th chapter to the end. Uh, which deals with uh, A, the call of Abraham and his life, B, the life of Isaac, C, the like life of Jacob, and D, the li life of Joseph. Part 2, Lesson 5, the book of Exodus. The word Exodus means way out, and it de derives its name from the story that, uh, uh, that it records of Israel's departure from Egypt. And, from the, the, and for the promised land. The history extends from slavery of the Israelites just prior to the birth of Moses until the erection of the tabernacle in the wilderness. Take a note into the following divisions of Exodus. A. Israel oppressed, by, uh, oppressed in Egypt. B. Birth of Moses, a life until 80 years old. C. The call of Moses and Israel's miraculous ex exit from Egypt. D, the Ten Commandments and the other laws given to Moses on Mount Sinai. And E, the tabernacle built and erected in uh, the wilderness. Part 3, Lesson 5. The Book of Leviticus. The tribe of Levi, the house of Aaron and, the tr uh, and that tribe, was selected by Yahweh to be the priestly tribe. There <coughs> they were to offer the sacrifices, perform the service of the tabernacle and the transport of the tabernacle equipment in Israel's journey in the wilderness. The book of Le Leviticus, which derives its name from Levi, gives the law of sacrifice and feasts and the qualifications and support of a holy, uh, uh, and holiness of the Levitical, Levitical priesthood. Uh, take a note... Uh, uh, Take into note the following events in Leviticus. A. The law on various offerings. B. Aaron and his sons consecrated to the priest office. And C. Various laws to define the cleansing and sacrifice. Part 4, Lesson 5. The Book of Numbers. The book takes its name from the fact that it records the numbering of the children of Israel at Sinai. And later, near the end of the wilderness wanderings, naturally it tells of the trans, uh, uh, transpiring events in the 40 years in the wilderness. Take into note the following events in numbers. A. Israel is numbered. B. Further laws given. C. The 12 spies, 10 unbelieving, rep uh, uh, unbelieving report Israel's condemnation. Uh, and never to enter into the promised land. Uh, D. Various events occurring in the wilderness um, wanderings. E. Moses and Aaron's, uh, Aaron sin and, they, and are refused admittance into Canaan. F. Israel numbered again at the end of the 40 years. G. Yahweh gives further commandments through Moses. Part 5. Lesson uh, five, the book of Deuteronomy. <coughs> Deuteronomy means the second law. Now the new generation has grown up, uh, uh, ready to enter Canaan, the promised land. Moses rehearses many of the laws given to Israel. Thus the name applied to this book is explained. Memorize uh, uh, and remember the following events in Deuteronomy. A. Moses rehearses the law and exhorts the new generation. B. Moses blesses Joshua, uh, the, leader, uh, uh, the new leader, and encourages him. C. Moses views the promised land from Mount Nebo and dies. Moses did not uh, enter into the, into the promised land. I'm going to expand on these uh, central themes.
by me going over the, some vital in, in information that is found in these books, which is kind of important. You will notice the Ten Commandments are recorded in Exodus tw uh, 20 and in Deuteronomy 5. And for this lesson, I have not included the bulk of the lessons, any passages of Scripture. Uh, so just to give you a sense that this is a Bible lesson, I have placed the following passages of Scripture for your study and purposes. Make a note of the following passages of Scripture. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning, Yahweh, God, created the heavens and the earth. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. I'm going to read, go over some of this. In the book of Genesis, one of the most important things about... Um, there are events in the book of Genesis. For the exciting point of this, the book of Genesis, the biggest important things in Genesis for me is Noah's Ark. Now, some people make a big problem and say, oh, it was just a fictional uh, retelling of the, uh, of the Gilgamesh epic. Well, I'm thankful to the fact that uh, Yahweh used one man, Ron Wyatt, to discover the, what I call the seven stones from, of the earth that are crying out to mankind. The seven stones being the first one in order. Noah's Ark found in eastern Turkey near the Armenian-Turkish-Iranian border. Discovered by Ron White, but although picked up by Turkish um, uh, flight officers um, uh, during the World War II period, and has now been fully confirmed by scientific analysis and evidence has been extracted. And then we'll lead through there to, of course, obviously, after uh, the flood, we have Sodom and Gomorrah, happening around about the time of Abraham and Lot, the five cities of the plains, Sodom, Abner, Zebuim, and Zoah. These five cities of the plains have now been discovered. They are now uh, on the western seaboard of the Dead Sea down in Israel. In fact, Gomorrah is right under the shadow of Masada. If anybody wants to go twattling down there, go and have a look. You can pick up millions of balls, of press, bowl, press powder balls of sulfur. Um, the evidence is there. You can look it up and check it up on the internet. Then after Sodom and Gomorrah, then you have, of course, obviously, the events leading up to Joseph's uh, eventual uh, life in uh, Egypt, uh, which then leads to uh, um, the Egyptian famine, seven fat years followed by seven lean years. It was under Joseph's administration that Egypt survived that. And then after Joseph's survival of that, then you have uh, the rise of Moses, and they're walking from in the Exodus, which takes us nice and neatly to the book of Exodus. Because the, the book of Exodus actually deals with the crossing of the Red Sea, the, uh, the Yam Suf, which is the, um, the Gulf of Aqaba. And if you go down to uh, a place called Nuweiba, and you look underneath the sea uh, between Nuweiba and Saudi Arabia, you will find loads of chariot parts and horse hooves and human remains. These are the remains of Pharaoh's army that were, that were covered by water as the waters collapsed in on them just after the Jews, the Israelites, uh, uh, managed to get to Saudi Arabia. Which obviously would then tell you that Mount Sinai is in Saudi Arabia, not in the Sinai Peninsula. That was by Catherine uh, uh, Constantine's mother-in-law or mother, mother-in-law. Uh, she, put, she gave that monastery, she put that site there down in the Sinai Peninsula, but it's not the real site. Um, the real Mount Sinai is found in Saudi Arabia, there's loads of evidence for that. And we're leading through the events that are taking us up through into the whole of the Torah. And in fact, the reality of the Torah is actually much more in depth than you can imagine. Uh, if you take the genealogy, and Chuck Missler has done a great one on the genealogy, as found in, uh, I believe it's Genesis chapter 6, I think, or Genesis chapter 5. And if you look at the names of the people in the genealogy, from Adam to Noah, they actually tell you the story of salvation, the story of the fall of mankind, and the story of salvation of mankind, and the deliverance of mankind. These are cosmic codes. This is why the book of Genesis is the most maligned book in the world. 
In fact, I'd go so far as to say that even religions like Islam cannot match the record as found in the book of Genesis. You can't. You can't match it. And I have a study one day, which I will do after I've done this series. I've got coming up a series of study to do on a project of which I've done, which I've got a chart. I've got two charts to present to you, um, which will be done as future projects. But they're all connected to this because the reason why, as I have quoted at the beginning of this lesson for me doing these studies, is essentially this. We're living in a period of time in which mankind will not endure sound doctrine. I want people to know sound doctrine. So when somebody comes, the detractors come in their direction, they're able to then say, well, hang on, I've got a Bible passage of Scripture I want to quote. And you can go to these lessons, to the comment section, cut and paste them out, put them in a Word document, extract whatever passages of Scripture from whatever version of the Bible that you have. I prefer to use the King James Version. Now even that's being attacked. Some people are saying even that's being got at. Oh my goodness, we're living in an age of deception where the game is afoot, as Sherlock Holmes once said. Here's the uh, genealogy as found in Genesis. Uh, and it's interesting genealogy. I'm reading from an image that I have here, um, which I, I'm going to quote. The genealogy is found in Genesis chapter 5. Okay, Adam, which uh, in Hebrew means equals man. Seth. Uh, equals appointed. Enosh equals mortal. Canaan, which is K-E-N-A-N, -N, equals sorrow, but. Um, Mahalel equals the blessed God. Jared equals shall come down. Enoch equals teaching. Methuselah equals death shall bring. Lamech equals the despairing, Noah, the comforter, or rest. So let's read that story. Here you are, Genesis chapter 5, just using the names in that genealogy. From Adam, so you've got Adam, Seth, Enosh, Canaan, Mahalel, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah. This is the story written in English. Man is, a, is appointed, mortal, sorrow, but the blessed God, shall come down, teaching, his death shall bring the despairing comfort and rest. That's a cosmic code. My belief is that if you study the book of Genesis specifically, as well as the rest of the Hebrew Bible, but specifically Genesis, you will actually find some cosmic codes written all over that book that will just be absolutely mind-blowing. And it's a story that has yet to be fully unraveled for mankind. So I hope you've enjoyed what I've just given you with that one. Enjoy.